too. I know that you you have um, a both raised up. Uh, like I just think of it as I know that this is kind of a funny phrase, but prophesying machines almost because yeah. there's just this anointing that is imparted through your teaching and through what the Lord's given you to carry that literally is infused into those that you teach. And it's like, I, you know, you can always identify a CI prophet because they're like prophesying <laughs> machines. It's just amazing. And I want to encourage anyone who's interested in really growing in the prophetic to go to CI, to look up their courses. Um, a lot of it's online now and, and digital and lots of books and everything, but it's such solid, solid teaching. But not only that, there is impartation. So I just want to encourage you with that. But a lot of your team, including yourselves, of course, you have um, prophesied over presidents, government leaders, governors, uh, people in the um, economic leadership of the world. In fact, a lot of your team worldwide is very much um, involved in really impacting those realms. And one of the things that I'm hearing uh, uh, lately is that there are those who believe that we shouldn't even, as prophetic people, be speaking or like releasing prophetic words about government or presidents or whatever, or um, even taking it to the loss, that's another area that, you know, is supposed to be taboo. But what do you feel about that? What does the Lord say? Well, I think that the prophetic, especially if you talk about taking it to the lost, I mean, that is the number one prime tool Come on. uh, to people's hearts, because when people know that God has spoken to them, um, it, it erases whatever doubt or unbelief they have that God actually is real. I was prophesying to this girl this one time, and um, and uh, the and basically I, I didn't understand anything that the prophecy was saying. I, I, I felt like I was speaking gibberish almost as the words were coming out of my mouth. But what was happening is that God was literally answering a conversation. She had just, you know, yelled at him and he was basically speaking back to her and answering her. And she took the she took the microphone away from me and she said, I just found out God is real. And so I think that one of the best ways to make Jesus real, whether it's to a, a lost sinner or to the president of a country is to, to prophesy to them and to make Jesus real to them because God will reveal the secrets uh, of their heart. Tell, tell them about the forsaken girl. I uh, prophesied over this one girl that was very angry, very angry young lady. Um, she was at Mercy Ministries, Mercy Multiplied. And um, every time I was, I was sharing and talking with the girls, I go in and I minister prophetically over these young women that are just very broken. And uh, she was like shooting daggers at me with her eyes. And every time I would say something about God, she would roll her eyes. And so I finally just brought her up and, and I said, can I just minister to you? And she said, whatever, you know, <laughs> just, you know, and so I brought her up and I laid my hands on her and uh, the Lord just said to her, my daughter, you're, you're not forsaken. You're not forsaken. You've tried to even forsake yourself, but you're not forsaken. I didn't, just didn't make any sense to me. And she just started weeping and crying. This girl that was just so belligerent just a moment before. And I thought, well, Honestly, my thinking was that's kind of a generic word, you know? <laughs> and so after I prophesied to her, she says, you have no idea why that touched me so, so deeply. She said, but when you said, God said, I'm not forsaken, she rolled up her sleeve and on her forearm, she had taken a knife and carved the word forsaken because that's what she believed about herself. She believed she was forsaken. I had no idea that was there. The people in the room had no idea that was there. But God knew that was there. So I think it's one of the best ways to convince people that God is real. Whether they're a sinner, a homeless person on the street, or the president of a nation, <laughs> they need to know that yeah. God is real. And I think that prophets always prophesied in the Old Testament. Prophets always prophesied into government and particularly prophesying to individuals within government. Whether right. it's an internet prophecy, I think that there may be a difference between prophesying something on the internet and prophesying something to that person individually. Well, there are two things that God's going to use the most in this great harvest that's coming and, and that we're entering into is the prophetic and the miracles. And uh, the prophetic, you know, I tell them Muslims don't believe in the Christian evangelists. Jews don't believe in Christian evangelists, but they do believe in prophets. Yeah. And if you can go in and prophesy and it hits it right the mark and, it, and it's true and it comes to pass right away, I'm in a true God anointed, God directed, God confirmed prophecy. It makes believers out of them. And uh, all Jesus told Nathan was, I saw you under the pomegranate tree. It made a believer out of him. Just one little word of prophecy. The woman at the well, one little prophecy, your husband, 
you know, one little prophecy brought a great revival. And I've seen it just transform people. And so we're going to see prophets raised up more than ever before. It's absolutely essential yeah. that the company of prophets arise to greet the great harvest. We have apostolic miracles and prophetic redecorations. And we're going to see some uh, Daniel prophesying to Nebuchadnezzar's. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they're going to be going in and say, here, it won't be broadcast. It won't be on television. We won't make a stand. But it'll go to them and say, God says, you're going to eat, you're going to eat grass like an animal, you know. <laughs> and after seven years, the guy came back and writes a letter to all his 220 nations and says, no God, but the most high God of Daniel. Everybody serve him. And anybody who speaks against him has got me for a problem, you know. I mean, and, and some will be like Cyrus. God will just deal with them and they'll be willing to work with the church. And so how when we come to these goat and sheep nations, we've got to shake up the whole nation. We've got to come in. So the miracles and the prophetics, what's going to be the two main instruments God uses in this great great end time harvest that we're entering into. And, you know, I agree. <laughs> and if I could say this, you know, I think that all of the, the recent controversy, um, I love the scripture that says the curse will be turned to a blessing for you, says the Lord, because I believe that all this recent controversy is pressing those that are prophetic to go beyond just operating in the gift mm -hmm. and to get into the word, to go back and read some of the foundational books, to understand the nature of prophecy, to understand the nature of God in prophecy, um, to understand the challenge of the character of the prophet. Because, you know, the only prophets that were labeled false prophets weren't, weren't just those whose words didn't come to pass. It was those like Balaam who prophesied a true messianic word yeah. in the book of Numbers. He's the only one that gave a messianic prophecy in the book of Numbers. And right. yet Jesus called him a false prophet, not because he gave a false word, but because he had bad character. Oh, and yes. so part of our mission yeah. from the very beginning was not just to train people to operate in a gift but to have the character and the maturity that would match the gift. Because anybody can train a gift, but you've got to be trained in maturity. You've got to be trained in character. Bishop lined out the 10 M's for mature ministry 40 years ago. Yeah, it's I, so good too. I will try to name them, but That's I will miss 20, them, okay? 20 years ago. Twenty. No, it was longer than no, 20 years, years ago. ago yeah. It was 1980. Three yeah, yeah, in 1984. Yeah. I'm older than you think I am. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the man, his message, his ministry, his maturity, his marriage, how he handles money, what are the motives, what are the methods, morality. I morality, that's a big one. What's the person's morality? I mean, no, you know, my husband got a prophecy one time that was one of the most life-changing prophetic words that he ever had. He went down under the power of God. This was back in 1978 went down under the power of God. God spoke basically a word that lined out his entire destiny, his, his entire ministry. And uh, at the end of that, he got up to leave the platform after he got up off the floor, the guy laid hands on him again, prophesied again. And, and it was a life-changing word for my husband. That prophet died of AIDS three years later because he was living a secret homosexual life. See, God is not so much as interested, just we, we can train the gift. But the yes. character, the maturity, the morality, the 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 the, the way you minister, um, these are things that we've taught for years. And so I think when we talk about maturing in the prophetic, some of it is nothing new. Some right. of it is going back to some of the things that we laid as a foundation and saying it's the it's the gifts and the fruit that have yes. got to operate together and, and in order to really see the the church advance and the prophetic movement right. advance. God's shaking out impure motives. God's shaking out um, people who have have you know deep character flaws, and uh, and God have mercy. We all do, and so we're we're great. We're grateful to Him for His mercy that is taking us to a higher yeah. level for this yeah. new season.